Hello students, I hope you understood the basics of diagonal diagram from the part one of this video. In this video, we are going to solve some questions on fluid shift between the intracellular and the extracellular fluids. These are the choices for the questions we are going to discuss. The right side diagram show the volume expansion and the left side shows the presence of volume contraction. When we say volume expansion and contraction, we specifically refer to the extracellular fluid volume. The solid line represents the original volume and the dotted line shows the changes in various conditions. Before I give the answers, please pause the video and try to answer them by yourself. Then verify your answers with me. Ok, let's start. First question, a 4 year old child is admitted with multiple episodes of diarrhea and vomiting. What would the volume osmolarity diagram most likely look like in this case? It's a child with diarrhea and vomiting, so there is loss of fluids. So the option here is within these three. And in diarrhea and vomiting, there is loss of water and there is loss of solute too. So there would be a isosmotic fluid loss. And there will not be any change in the osmolarity of the ECF. So the correct choice is B. This is called isosmotic volume contraction because the final ECF volume is a same osmolarity and the volume would be lower than the normal value. The second question, a 40 year old man was rescued from the desert after spending a day without water. What would the volume osmolarity diagram most likely look like in this patient? In a hot climate, there will be loss of water by sweating and in sweating, there is more water loss than the solute lost. Sweat is hypoosmotic. It contains less number of solutes than the body fluid. So the remaining fluid in the ECF compartment would be more concentrated. So the choice is D, a hyperosmotic volume contraction. The water will also move out of the cell and the cell will begin to shrink. Question number three, a 30 year old female with Addison's disease is admitted with dehydration and weight loss what would the volume osmolarity diagram most likely look like in this patient? This is a case of Addison's disease. It's also called primary adrenal deficiency where there is deficiency of hormones secreted from the adrenal cortex. One of the hormones decreased is aldosterone which is responsible for the sodium reabsorption in the kidney. Without it, there would be loss of sodium in the urine. This would cause the osmolarity of the ECF to go down. This would cause the fluid shift from ECF into the intracellular compartment. The cells would start swelling. So the option is F. This is called hypoosmotic volume contraction in the extracellular fluid. Next question. A 28 year old woman drank 7.5 liters of water in few hours in a water drinking contest what would the volume osmolarity diagram most likely look like in this patient? This question is a real world incident happened about 10 years back. A woman drank large amount of water in a water drinking contest and unfortunately she died because of the fluid shift happened in her body. What would be the volume osmolarity diagram in this case? The water without solute is being added to the extracellular fluid that would cause expansion of ECF and there would be hyposmolar volume expansion. This will also cause water to move from ECF into the intracellular fluid. And this would cause the cells to swell and rupture and ultimately resulting in death. The option is E. Question number 5. A 50 year old man consumed large amount of sea water. What would be the volume osmolarity diagram in this case. Sea water contains more solutes than the body fluid. Drinking such hyperosmolar solution will increase the volume and the osmolarity of the ECF. A hyperosmolar volume expansion in the ECF. Water will also move out of the cells and the cells would begin to shrink. The correct choice is C. Thanks for watching and leave your doubts in the comments.